This video is sponsored by tanks.com. This is a great online website for 3D printable models. Tanks have really unique features. You can search similar 3D models from already existing ones and my personal favorite, exploding tool. If you're planning to build something that needs to be assembled, this helps you to understand way better what is going on. Back to the video. There is a lot of things to do, but let's start with gearbox. All STL files for 3D printing you find at tanks.com. Those steel rods, well I leave the sketch on the screen. Here's a tip for you. When you 3D print gears, use raft. Then you won't get the elephant foot at the first layer. This is really important to make the gears working properly. And just a little bit support is needed. But okay, let's get started. First, install two square nuts into the driver gear for set screws. You can use regular nuts, but square ones are better. Link for those you find down below. Now let's finally start assembling. We start with installing 775 motor and driver gear. This is probably the trickiest part. We need to push the motor shaft through the driver gear in a little bit limited space. Because the fit have to be really tight, we need to use some force. When this is nicely done, we need to secure the motor to the gearbox body by using 4mm bolts. Now take one screwdriver bit and screw those bolts by hand. <coughs> I know it's not professional, but designing this gearbox wasn't easy and this is just how it is. Now we can continue with the rest of the gears. This is nothing difficult. Just make sure you use some lubrication. And here it is, works perfectly. Because this tank needs two of them, I have already finished one before. So now when we have the gearboxes ready, we can start doing the next thing. Tank tracks. I'm not gonna lie, this is the worst part of this project. Mostly for two reasons. First, those links need a bit support material. This is just pain to remove. Because I print those with PTG and 0.8mm nozzle, they hold together so well. And the second reason, printing time. Like I just said, I printed those links with 0.8mm nozzle. With the optimal settings between strongness and time, for one link it took 45 minutes. For total we need 102 links, what means it's a bit less than 80 hours of printing time. If you are interested to print those links with 0.4mm nozzle, then it will take you more than 170 hours to print. But removing supports is way easier. When the supports are removed, we need M3 lock nuts and 3x25mm bolts. Push M3 nuts to the slots and screw bolts through the holes. Now two links are attached together. Good luck with the rest of the track. Now when the gearboxes and tracks are ready, we can finally assemble everything together. For this, I got one piece of wood plate. Measurements for that should look something like this. And those 3D printed parts where the sprockets and tracks go in. I'm not sure how it's called in English, well I don't know how it's called even in Estonia. Maybe side skirts, I don't know, I'm not sure. Anyway, I painted all this to metallic green. Okay, now to the assembly. Step 1. Attach those maybe called side skirts to the wood plate by using 4mm screws. Step 2. Install bearings to the sprockets. The feet have to be really tight, so don't be afraid to use some force. Then we need an 8mm threaded rod, 3D printed spacers and lock nuts. How it's going together you see in front of you.
step 3, driver sprocket. This one is a bit different than others. Obviously, it's gonna turn around the shaft. It have to turn with the shaft. Because the fit have to be really tight, use a power drill to push this 8mm steel rod through the sprocket. When this is done, then we have to place another sprocket to this shaft. This one will be connected with the gearbox. Then drill a 3mm hole to the shaft and push M3 bolt through the hole. Use one lock nut to make sure it will not fall out. Step 4. Screw those gearboxes to the wood plate. Make sure those two sprockets are aligned. Now we can connect the gearbox with the driver sprocket. For that I'm using this chain that I put in the last video. Link down below. The last mechanical thing to do is installing those tracks. After this we take a really quick look at the electronics. And then hopefully we can really drive this tank. The boiling part is already too long so let's do really fast with electronics. I'm using one 3 cell battery and two cheap AliExpress ESCs for brushed motors and Flysky receiver and transmitter. But why two ESCs? Because one goes to one motor and the other to other motor. It's possible to connect one ESC to two motors but in this case I gonna steer it. How steering work I show you a bit later. Then it make more sense. But right now I wanna see do this really work. If you are asking, after hundreds of hours 3D printing and many more hours for building, how I feel when I really see this driving. Well, good. Day 2. And really first test outside. If you are thinking why I don't show the GoPro footage, it's because I forget to put this recording. I had an idea. I wanted to see can this climb up over a small hill. And then this happened. Yes, Cobra was still not recording, but this saved those gearboxes from total destruction. But gearbox body did break. This place where the motors were mounted. Yeah, I had to print new ones and do everything all over again. Day three. <clears throat> Electronics is fine, it didn't get wet, but one track break. I did print a little extra of those links, fix the track and try it again. Those tracks keep breaking for two reasons. One is that a lot of snow gets between the sprockets and tracks. And second, outside is really cold and this PTG filament goes really brittle. Day four. I almost forget, let's take a really quick look at the steering. This is channel 3, this steers a left side of the tank. This is channel 2 and steers the right side of the tank. When I push those both up, then the tank moving forward. When I push those down, tank moving backwards. When I push one up or more up, then the tank start turning. And when I push one up and other down, then the tank will do 360. Okay, back to the ghoul part. I fixed the track again and waited a bit warmer day. So attempt number three, now my tank is on fire. One of those cheap ESCs is burning with open flame. I changed this shit to the same shit and we can now really do some tests.
at least in my opinion, it works really great. Except this tank is a bit nose heavy. That's why here is this P container with the weight, if you didn't notice before. But I wanna do one last snow test. Previously it really struggled in snow. When I designed this, I designed this as a snow tank, but it turns out this works really well except in snow. But it doesn't matter, I call this project a huge, huge success. If you did like this video, then you probably like my many others. And to not miss my any future content, I recommend to push this subscribe button. And don't forget to visit tanks.com. Thank you for watching and what is most important, see you guys next time. Bye.